Okay, so for our morning flow class, come to your mat. Let's come to seated on the mat today. If you have a block, it could be handy. You may or may not need it, but if you have one, grab it. And as you come to seated, you'll just come to seated with the legs extended out in front of you. Lean over to the right side and you'll grab the left foot and try to point the toes back behind you. So that's the goal is getting those toes back behind you. Your left hip is not sitting on the foot. So you might need to adjust and move the foot out to the side a little bit. You want it in close to the body, but not sitting on the hip. And if you feel like you're tilted way over to the right, that's when you take a block and you sit up on the block. But if you're gonna do that, you have to come all the way out, legs forward, bring a block underneath you, and then take that left foot bring it back. And this is a lot, uh, gives you just more space and freedom to be able to do this. So choose height or no height. Height almost always helps us in every shape. So that's something to think about. And then we'll just start with the chest up, close the eyes, come to the breath, take a deep breath in through the nose, back out through the nose. This time, take a deep breath in through the nose, fill all the way up, hold it at the very top, exhale out through the mouth, inhale in through the nose, back out through the nose. One more, inhale in and back out. Keep going, start to lean over to the right, extend the left leg forward, we're switching sides. So you'll lean over to the left hip, grab the right foot, try to point the toes back. Maybe you were able to do it on one side and not the other, so height is your friend. Knees are as close together as you can get them. Make sure you're not sitting on that right foot at all, but it's close in toward the body. Sit up tall, close the eyes, keep uh, with the same breath that we started with our Ujjayi breath. One more inhale and exhale. And lean over to the left, bring the right foot forward. If you're on a block, you can stay on the block. You'll just start to fold forward over the legs. If you can reach the feet, great. If it's too soon, just bring the hands down to the mat or to the legs. We wanna open up the back sides of the legs now that we've had them bent on each side. Chet, hearts reaching forward over the toes. If you have any chronic back issues, keep the back straight. Try not to have any rounding. And if you want to round and start to bring the head down, that's fine. You're not going for the deepest stretch. Just want to kind of counter what we were just doing. Letting the body warm up on its own. and slowly come back up to seated, come forward to hands and knees. Once you get there, stack the shoulders over the wrists, hips over the knees. Let's start with some cat cow on the inhale, reach the heart forward, lift the tail on the exhale, round the spine, chin and toward the chest. Keep going, inhale and exhale. Feel free to go at your own pace. Your breath might be longer or shorter than mine. Stay with that. One more cycle, inhale and exhale. And come back to a neutral spine. We'll come down onto our stomachs. So you can come down onto the forearms, walk the hands back or walk the feet back behind you, set the hips down, reach the arms forward. So uh, it's like you're gonna shake someone's hand. Palms are facing one another and the thumbs are up. And then lower the head. So it's still lifted from the mat, but it's just about, uh, shoulder height. So it's pretty low to the mat without touching. So your nose is lifted away from the mat. Reach the right arm and the left leg up on your inhale. 
Exhale, set it back down. Left arm, right leg. Set it back down on the exhale. Inhale, lift, other side, right leg. Sorry, right arm, left leg. Exhale, set it down. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Set it down. Keep going side to side, staying with your breath here, but try not to let the feet lift up too high. You just want the foot in line with the hip, which is fairly low. Most of us can go way higher than that. And the hands in line with the shoulder when you lift it. One more time each side. Set everything back down. This time on your next inhale, lift both arms and both feet, but try not to go higher than the shoulders and the hips. So it's a little bit lower. You might feel more work in the back. So you're not arching the back here. Everything stays lifted. Keep that breath steady. And set the hands down, set the feet down. Let's rest. So stack the hands, rest the forehead down. You can lift the feet up and move the feet side to side like windshield wipers, if that's comfortable in your body. Sometimes it brings a tenderness to the lower back. And if that's the case, then you want to skip this. And set the feet back down to the mat. Bring the hands back by the lower ribs, setting up for baby cobras. So as the tops of the feet press down into the mat, they're hip width distance apart. Lift and spread the chest and then hover the hands. Your back is warm. It should be able to keep the chest lifted without you using the hands. Set the hands down, lower the chest. Inhale, lift back up, cobra. Elbows point back. Exhale, release. One more, inhale, lift up, cobra. Exhale, release, child's pose. Come up to hands and knees, big toes together, sit the hips back. From child's pose, come forward to hands and knees, back to tabletop. Step the right toes back behind you. Spin that right heel down flat. You want to walk it back so the left toes point to the arch of the right foot. And then you can kick the left toes out a little bit if you want to. My foot's coming off the mat completely. Right arm reaches up. So coming into your side plank, fire up that right leg, keeping the right leg down on the mat for now so you can feel that energy there. And then you can start to play with lifting the foot up just to hip height. Point the right toes back behind you, bend the right leg, bringing the heel in toward the glute, reach back with the right arm, see if you can connect the hand and the foot. If you can, lengthen the quad, open up across the chest, hug the core in, and you can press the foot into the hand, the hand back into the foot. And slowly release the right leg, reach the right arm back up to the sky, back to modified side plank, set the right foot down, right hand down, back to tabletop. Left foot steps back behind you, spin the left heel down flat, walk it back a little bit so the arch of the foot's in line with the right toes, and then kick the right foot out. Lift the left arm up. Fire up the left leg. So press down. Maybe the hips will lift up a little bit more. And then with control, lift the left leg up, toes pointing straight forward, foot in line with the hip, not any higher. Looks really good. Point the left toes back behind you. Bend the left leg, bringing the heel in toward the glute. Reach back with the left hand. See if you connect the hand and the foot. Press the foot into the hand, the hand into the foot, and it'll help you reach the heart forward. Lengthen the quad. Release the left foot, reach the left arm back up, modified side plank. Left foot comes down to the mat, left hand comes back down to the mat, and you're back in tabletop, hands and knees. 
Walk the hands forward ahead of the shoulders, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. So if you ended up getting cramps in the back of the leg when you were doing the um, modified side plank, downward facing dog is a really nice way to open up the back sides of the legs. So you reach the heels down toward the mat and you lift the hips up and that strength that lengthens the hamstring, the calf, all the muscles in between. Draw the shoulders toward the hips. Your neck has plenty of space. The traps go back toward the hips. Outer elbows hug in to keep the arms firm and straight. Then look forward at the hands. Step the right foot up to meet the left foot. Set that back knee down. Reach the arms up. Coming into a runner's uh, low lunge. Grab the left wrist with the right index finger and thumb, pull it up and over to the right. So open up the left side body. Come back up to center, cactus the arms, elbows in line with the shoulders, open the chest to the right. Treat this, we're, you, we're doing this twist for shoulder opening. So you wanna keep the elbows in line with the shoulders. Gaze can go to the right or even over the back arm. Then start to bring everything to face forward again. Hands come down to the mat, back toes tuck, lift the back knee. Now you're in that runner's lunge. Step back, downward facing dog, switch sides, look forward, left foot steps up between the hands, gently set the back knee down, reach the arms up and overhead, grab onto the right wrist with the left index finger thumb, pull it up and over to the left. Back through to center, cactus the arms, elbows in line with the shoulders, open the chest to the left. Maybe the gaze goes, that just depends on your balance and also your neck. Try to keep the hands right over the elbows. Sometimes they wanna go down toward the floor. Slowly come back through to center, facing forward. Hands come down to the mat. Puck, uh, tuck the back toes. Lift the back knee. Back to that runner's lunge. Find some length as you press back with that inner right heel. And then step back, downward facing dog. Heels reaching down toward the mat. Hips lifting up. Lowest front ribs are hugging in toward the body. So they're not poking the skin out away from, from you. Bend the knees, look up to the top of the mat, walk the feet up to the hands. Maybe try to keep the legs straight as you bring the feet all the way up to the top of the mat. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold. Two more like that, Ardha Uttanasana. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold. Last one, inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. We're coming all the way up. Inhale the arms all the way up overhead. Hands come together down in front of the heart on the exhale. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, hands to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Lower all the way down to the mat slowly with control. Tops of the feet to the mat, hands back by the lower ribs. Cobra, maybe a bigger one this time. Shoulders away from the ears, elbows still pointing straight back. Exhale, release. Downward facing dog, either plank or you could come up to hands and knees, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. Deeply bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, step, walk, get the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. 
exhale fold inhale circle the arms all the way up overhead hands come together down in front of the heart inhale reach up exhale forward fold inhale up halfway Exhale, full, bend the knees, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, shift forward onto the toes, bend the elbows halfway, up dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog. You can always stick with cobra if you prefer, so know that you have that choice. Deep bend in the knees, look up to the top of the mat, lightly bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold. Inhale, circle the arms all the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, full, bend the knees, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower down halfway chaturanga, inhale up for your back bend, exhale back, downward facing dog. Few breaths here. Right leg, right foot steps up between the hands. Come back into that runner's lunge. Feet are hip width distance apart. Left hand underneath the left shoulder. Reach the right arm up. So get the hand in line with the shoulder. You might be able to look up and see it so you can line it up. Palms facing away from you. Right hand comes down to the mat. Hop the back foot in, seal the heel. You're setting up for warrior one. So heel to heel or wider with the feet. Reach the arms forward all the way up. Try to square the hips and the chest. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Open up across the chest. Humble warrior. It doesn't need to be your deepest one. You'll be coming back into this. So if you want to just rest the chest on the thigh, you're welcome to do that. If you feel like you're open enough and you want to bring the right side rib cage inside the thigh, that's an option too. Just make sure that right sit bones pointing straight back and not, and not out to the right. We're coming back up, warrior one, release the clasp of the hands, reach the arms forward all the way up. And hands come down to the mat, step back to plank pose, any way you want back to downward facing dog. Other side, left foot steps up between the hands, Right hand stays down, left arm reaches up for that twist. Line up the hand with the shoulder. Left hand comes back down to the mat, hop the back foot in just enough so you can seal the heel. You still want a longer stride if you can. Reach the arms forward all the way up, Virabhadrasana one. Interlace the fingers, one finger over behind the back, point the knuckles back, fold forward, humble warrior. Keep the lunge in the front knee, maybe rest the chest or bring that left side rib cage inside the thigh. Point the left sit bone straight back so that left knee and left hip are in one line. Warrior one. Reach the arms forward all the way up. Take another inhale. Exhale the hands down to the mat. Make your way back, downward facing dog, however you want to get there.
bend the knees, look up to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands, inhale up halfway, exhale fold, circle the arms all the way up to standing, bring the hands together overhead, down in front of the heart. So standing at the top of the mat, bring the fingers behind, uh, bring the hands behind you and interlace the fingers, point the knuckles down and back. So similar to what we did when we were setting up for our humble warrior, try to engage the feet. Like you're trying to spread the mats and enough until you feel all the muscles in the legs lift up core hug in shoulders away from the ears, keeping the arms firm, point the knuckles down and then lift the hands away from the body. Just a little bit. doesn't need to be a lot. And we'll keep going with that. Point the knuckles down and back and then lift the hands up. Try not to take the shoulders with you. Keep the feet and legs engaged. Point the knuckles down and back, lift the elbows up, arms up, not necessarily the elbows. <laughs> down and back, lift the arms up. If you have room for one more or two more, maybe you do it. And slowly bring the knuckles back to the hips keeping the fingers interlaced. So there's one way you like to interlace the fingers. That's the index finger you wanna remember that's on top. Release the arms down by the sides. Shift and you're into the asana pose. So arms are still firm reaching down toward the mat. Shift the weight over to the right foot. Bend the left leg, bring the heel in toward the glute, pointing the toes, reach back, see if you can grab the foot. You can reach the right arm up for balance. And you're coming into a standing quad stretch. So lengthen that left thigh away from you, lift the chest up. Also playing with your balance here, but that the knees are side by side. So try not to let that left knee go forward or back. Inner thighs are also working. Keep that right arm up, left foot comes down to the mat, left arm re reaches up, so Urba Hastasana. And then this time, interlace the fingers behind the back, one finger over, point the knuckles back, try to spread the mat with the feet, shoulders away from the ears, point the knuckles down and then lift the arms up. Knuckles point down and back, arms lift up, feet and legs are still engaged, point the knuckles back, arms lift up. If you have one or two more, go for it. Otherwise, stay where you are. And this is a deep shoulder opening. So you just feel where you can go with it. And slowly bring the hands back to the hips. Tadasana mountain pose. Shift the weight over to the left foot. Bend the right leg. Reach back. See if you can grab the right foot. Left arm reaches up overhead. Lengthen the right side body. So the whole right side. Quad. Pubic bone to tailbone, tailbone to pubic bone. So you're standing tall. And gently release the right foot, reach the right arm up. Bend the knees, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, fold, step the left foot back behind you, left hand underneath the left shoulder, right arm reaches up for that twist in your lunge. Right hand comes down to the mat, hop the back foot in, warrior one. Interlace the fingers behind the back, humble warrior, Maybe it feels different after that last shoulder opening we just did. Warrior one. Hands come down to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Make your way back. Downward facing dog. From down dog, bend the knees, look up to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold, circle the arms all the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana, exhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway, 
Exhale, fold, right foot steps back, feet hip width, right hand underneath the right shoulder, lift the left arm up, find that twist. Left hand to the mat, hop the back foot in, warrior one. Interlace the fingers one finger over, humble warrior. Keep the shoulders away from the ears, bow forward. Try to keep that deep lunge in the front leg. Back up, warrior one. And exhale, hands come down to the mat, step back to plank pose, any way you want to downward facing dog. Bring the knees down to the mat. Bring the elbows and the forearms down to the mat. So hug the belly in. Reach the heart forward, start to walk the elbows and the forearms forward, bring the forehead down to the mat. So you're coming into uh, Anahatasana, puppy dog pose. Hands can come together like prayer and back behind the head. And then from here, you can start to walk the elbows forward. Just make sure you're keeping those thighs vertical. Your hips want to go forward with the chest, but you're trying to keep them right over the knees. Belly hugs in. Set the hands back down to the mat, lift the head back up, come back to downward facing dog, hands to the mat, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back, bend the knees, look up to the top of the mat, step, walk, get the feet up between the hands, inhale up halfway, exhale, fold, this time chair pose, bend the knees, reach the arms up. Come all the way up to standing. Hands come down by the sides. Tadasana, mountain pose. Find that focal point straight in front of you. Shift the weight over to the left foot. I'm sorry, shift the weight over to the right foot. Bend the left leg, reach back, grab for the left foot. You can reach the right arm up. Knees are together. Keep that focal point straight in front of you. Come into dancer's pose. So press the foot into the hand, the hand back into the foot. Heart's reaching forward. Gaze stays forward the whole time. And then you lift the left leg from the inner left thigh. Left knees pointing straight back, not out to the side. Chest stays lifted. And you're trying to get that left knee and chest in line. Slowly rise back up to standing. Keep hold of that left foot if you can. Ar right arm up overhead. Left foot steps down, left arm reaches up, Urdhva Hastasana. Bend the knee, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, fold, left foot steps back behind you, left hand under underneath the left shoulder, reach the right arm up for your twist. Right hand comes down to the mat, hop the back foot in, warrior one. Interlace the fingers behind the back, point the knuckles back, humble warrior. Back up, Virabhadrasana one. Next exhale, hands come down to the mat, make your way back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look up to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, chair pose. All the way up to standing, arms down by the sides, Tadasana. Shift the weight over to the left foot, 
bend the right leg, reach back, see if you can grab the right foot, left arm reaches up to the sky. Find that focal point straight in front of you, the standing leg, the left inner thigh spinning back behind you, right inner thigh still engaged too. Keep the right foot and the right hand pressing into one another. Start to reach forward with the left hand and press back with the right foot at the same time. Dancer's pose. Right knees pointing straight back. Don't let it go out to the right. Chest stays lifted. And you'll slowly come right back out the way you came in. Ooh. Set the right foot down. Right arm reaches up. Urdhva Hastasana. Bend the knees. Sit back chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Right foot steps back behind you. Right hand underneath the right shoulder. Lift the left arm up. That twist should feel so good after your back bend. Left hand comes back down to the mat. Hop the back foot in just enough to get that heel down. Reach the arms forward and up. Vera one. Reach the arms back behind you. Interlace the fingers one finger over. Humble warrior. Back up, warrior one. Next, exhale. Bring the hands down to the mat. Step back, downward facing dog. Up to you on the vinyasa. Few breaths in Adho Mukha Svanasana. Bend the knees. Look up to the top of the mat. Bring the feet up to the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Chair pose. All the way up to standing, arms overhead, Urdhva Hastasana. Bring the left arm down, right arm stays up. Shift the weight over to the right foot, bend the left leg, reach back, grab for the foot, and just start with the knees together. Get your balance, square the hips. You can keep the, so you're grabbing the foot on the outer edge of the foot. If you feel like your shoulders are open, you could grab from the inner edge of the foot. And you can play with it here. See if the shoulder rotation's there. If it's too much now, it's going to get worse. You just want to switch the hand to the outer foot. All right. So once you have your grip, start to look forward, lean forward with the chest, press the foot into the hand, lift that left inner thigh up, dancer's pose. With control, you'll release the left leg and come into warrior three. So release the left leg, left arm goes forward. You can stay looking forward if it helps. Then bend the standing leg, reach back with the ball of the left foot, left hand underneath the left shoulder, right arm reaches up for that twist in your lunge. Right hand comes down to the mat, hop the back foot in, Warrior one. Interlace the fingers back behind you. Humble warrior. Back up, warrior one. Bring the hands back down to the mat. Maybe a vinyasa if you want on the way back to downward facing dog. Knees bend, look forward, feet to the top of the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Chair pose. All the way up to standing, arms overhead, Urva Hastasana. Left arm comes down, right arm stays up. Shift the weight over to the left leg. Oh, I messed that up. Bring both arms up, sorry. Right arm comes down, left arm shifts up. Or 
oh gosh, left arm up, right arm down, shift the weight over to the left foot, bend the right leg, reach back, grab for the foot. See what's easiest, maybe the outer edge of the foot. And here's where you can play with your grip. You could move it to the inside of the foot. So you're grabbing the big toe mound. If it's too much, switch it. Press the foot into the hand, the hand back into the foot. Start to look forward, reach the chest forward. Dancer's pose. Warrior three with control. Right leg goes back, right arm reaches forward. Bend the standing leg, reach back with the ball of the right foot. And right hand comes down, left arm reaches up. Left hand comes down to the mat, right heel comes in, warrior one. Interlace the fingers back behind you, one finger over, humble warrior. Back up, warrior one. One more inhale, exhale the hands down to the mat, make your way back, downward facing dog. Few breaths in your downward facing dog. Find the length in the spine, the arms and the legs. Then bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold. Ukatasana chair pose. Sit a little bit lower and lift the chest up higher. Come all the way up to standing. Urdhva Hastasana, arms overhead, shoulders away from the ears. You're trying to spread the mat with the feet. From here, shift the weight over to the right foot. Left arm can come down, bend the left leg, grab the foot. Decide which grip you want on the foot, outer edge or inner edge. Dancer's pose. Maybe that left inner thigh lifts a little higher. Warrior three, go slow. This time, twisted half moon. Left hand comes down underneath the shoulder. Right arm reaches up. Keep that left leg lifted. Spine is long. Right leg is strong. Right hand comes down to the mat. Standing splits. You can bring the head toward that standing leg. Just a quick one. Step that left heel all the way back. Warrior one. Deep bend in the front knee. Reach the arms forward and up. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Fold forward, humble warrior. Back up, warrior one. Little different this time. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Step the left foot up to meet the right foot. You're back in Urva Hastasana at the top of the mat. Start to shift the weight over to the left foot. Right arm down by the side. Bend the right leg. Reach back. Grab for the top of the foot. Outer grip or grab the inner edge of the foot. Dancer's pose. Find the stability here so you can take it with you. Virabhadrasana three, gently let go of that right leg, keep it strong, right arm reaches forward. Hips are neutral, you're not opening up that right hip. Look down toward the mat, right hand comes down underneath the shoulder, left arm reaches up, keep that right leg lifted, crown of the head going forward. So you're pressing out through both legs, opening up across the chest. Left hand comes down underneath the shoulders and then it's up to you how close you walk the hands to that front leg, the standing leg. 
Reach back with the sole of the right foot, land in warrior one. So press that heel down to the mat, reach the arms forward and up, Virabhadrasana one. Interlace the fingers behind the back, humble warrior. Back up, warrior one. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Step the right foot up to meet the left foot, Urva Hastasana. Bring the feet all the way together. So inner edges of the feet are touching. Arms are still reaching up. Hug the outer legs in. So outer ankles are hugging in. Outer hips are hugging in. It's like you have one leg. Core is lifting up. Chest is lifting up. Shoulders in place. Lift the heels up as high as you can. Standing on the balls of the feet. Keep that gaze focal point straight forward. Even though the eyes are open, you're staying in. Then bend the knees, come into chair pose with the heels lifted. And then come into a yogi toe squat. So try to bring the heels, all the hips, all the way down toward the heels, pointing the knees forward. Arms are up to keep the chest lifted. Bring the hands together right in front of the heart. Keep pressing into the hands to keep the chest open. Open the chest to the right. Gaze can stay forward. If you feel comfortable, you can look to the right. Then come back to center, switch sides. Chest opens up to the left. Maybe the gaze goes with you. Come back to center, forward fold. Bring the hands down, straighten the legs. Let's widen the feet. So go to the outer edges of the mat. You can clasp opposite elbows in front of you. You can sway side to side with the upper body if your lower back's okay with that. Switch the clasp of the elbows, other forearm in front. Hands down to the mat, heel toe the feet back to hip width distance. Inhale up halfway. Exhale full, bend the knees, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose. Last vinyasa if you want one. Otherwise, just go straight back to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, glide forward to plank pose, lower all the way down onto your stomach. So you're lying flat on your stomach, tops of the feet to the mat, arms reach out in front of you. Turn the palms so they face one another, thumbs are up. Press down into the tops of the feet. Keep the tops of the feet pressing down into the mat so you keep the legs active. Hug the belly in, lift the hands up just to shoulder height. And it's like someone's pulling your wrists away from you and you're keeping the shoulders in place at the same time, looking down the bridge of the nose. Cactus the arms, lift the chest. Bring the hands right down by the rib cage, cobra. Rest, you can stack the hands or turn the head to one side and rest the side of the head down on the ground. Either one's okay. And we'll do that again. Reach the arms out in front of you. Thumbs up, palms face one another. Press into the tops of the feet to keep the legs firm. Lift the arms up just to shoulder height. If you want, you can keep the feet where they are. You could hover the feet away from the mat. So keep them as low as you possibly can without touching the mat. Keep those legs firm. Then cactus the arms. Maybe you're able to lift the chest a little bit higher. Hands right down by the lower rib cage, tops of the feet pressed down, cobra. Exhale, release, rest.
All right. A little different this time. Reach the arms out in front of you. Palms face one another. Thumbs are up. Press down into the tops of the feet. Lift the hands up to shoulder height. Decide if you want to hover the feet. Cactus the arms. Bend the legs. Reach back. See if you can grab the feet or ankles. And you can have the toes pointed or the feet flex. It's up to you. And then lift. Press the feet into the hands, the hands back into the feet. Lift from the inner thigh. Chest is open. Don your asana. Slowly let that go. Bring the legs down. Rest. Bring the hands to the mat, just outside the rib cage. Come back up to hands and knees, maybe knees and feet together for this child's pose. If you prefer to have big toes together, knees apart, that's fine. Sit the hips back, forehead comes down to the mat, arms out in front of you, or they could be back behind you if you want to give the shoulders a break. Bring the hands to the mat, come up to hands and knees. So once you get to hands and knees, you may want to block nearby just in case you'll keep the knees together and the feet apart. So now we're coming into that full version of Virasana hero's pose. So tops of the feet are down on the mat. You'll sit back between the heels. So you're not sitting on the heels at all. And then see if you can connect the hips down to the mat between the feet. If you can't, that's when you should bridge that gap with a block, blanket, whatever you have. I'm going to go blanket because the block's a little too high. So you can take whatever it is, but your hips need to rest down on something. So as soon as you get there, make sure you're even, you have some support underneath you, whether it's the mat or some kind of prop, get creative. Arms down, uh, arms, hands to the thighs, lift the chest. Inner thighs are going down toward the mat. So we've been playing with this shape of the legs our whole practice today. It might make this a little bit more accessible. Notice if you have a relationship with this pose and if it's different uh, now. But this is a hip opening. You're also opening up all the lower body joints. So feet, the outer ankles are hugging in. This is great for the knees, for healthy knees. You always have to listen to our bodies if our bodies just won't go in a certain direction. So if you just had like a knee replacement, this isn't the best idea, but you wouldn't even be able to attempt it either. Few more breaths here. See if you can get the hips down a little bit lower, chest up a little bit higher. Now that the body's been in the shape for a while, and slowly start to shift forward back to hands and knees. If you have anything underneath the hips, set it off to the side. You won't need it. And you'll come to seated on the mat, legs out in front of you. Let's bring the sole of the right foot in close to the body. So you want to be able to step down into that right foot so that you can keep the spine lifted and then bring the right arm back behind you. You can either wrap this left arm around the bent leg, or maybe you get the left breast all the way over and then hook the left elbow coming into a deeper version of the twist. This is too much. You just wrap the left arm, but if you're going to attempt this, you want to get the arm low. So the elbow goes lower than the knee and you have to twist the chest so that it's going all the way to the right. And the gaze can go back behind you. If you'd like left toes still pointing up. So a deep twist for all those back bends.
Bring the gaze back forward, slowly unwind the chest, extend the right leg forward. Bring that left foot in. You need to use the hands to get the foot as close as you can in toward that left hip. Left hand goes back behind you. Either wrap the right arm around the bent leg, press down to both sit bones, sit up tall. Maybe you're able to open up the chest all the way to the left. If you can, then you can play with hooking the elbow right outside the thigh, trying to get the elbow lower than the knee. And then you can sit up a little taller, find your twist. Start to bring the gaze back forward, unwind the chest, extend the legs out in front of you. Maybe shift side to side a little bit so you feel even on the sit bones and reach the arms up overhead. As you press down to the sit bones, reach up through the chest, crown of the head, but keep the shoulders in place. And then forward fold, Paschimottanasana. So grab onto whatever's there. It might be the feet, the legs, the mat, let the head and the neck go. If you're dealing with any back pain, keep the back straight, no rounding in the back. You can even stay upright. And also a good modification for that is if you have a strap, just hanging onto the strap and keeping the chest upright and you still get a nice opening in the back sides of the legs. And all of us are pressing those muscles in the back sides of the legs down into the mat. Come back up to center, soles of the feet to the mat. Scoot yourself forward. Come down onto your back. Bring the knees in toward the chest while you're lying on your back. Head down. Let's take a happy baby. This is going to be your first external hip opening. So you can just open up the knees wide. You can keep the hands on the knees, backs of the thighs, calves, ankles. Maybe the feet are right there. bring the knees back in toward the chest, set the left foot down onto the mat, extend the left leg forward, reach the right leg up, flex the foot, bringing the toes down toward the face. And then you can walk the hands up the leg as much as you'd like, finding a nice opening in your body here. And hug the right knee in toward the chest, set the right foot down, bring the left knee in toward the chest, extend the right leg out in front of you, heel all the way down to the mat, extend the left leg up, flex the foot, toes down toward the face, and then walk the hands up the leg till you find a nice opening on this side. Right leg is still firm, like you're standing on it. So you're trying to press the top of the right thigh down toward the mat. And that'll give you a little bit more length in the leg on the left leg. And gently release the left foot all the way down to the mat. Bring the inner edges of the feet together, inner legs together. Bring the arms down by the sides. Stretch the legs way out. So you're squeezing them together. You might even lift the heels and then set the heels down. Let the toes open up to the side. Lift the chest up to get the shoulder blades underneath you. Shavasana. Backs of the hands. Rest down on the uh, ground just outside the mat.
And now I'll start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Walk the feet in, bending the knees. Reach the right arm up and overhead. Roll over to your right side. See if you can lie that head into the bicep of the right arm. Left hand comes down in front of you and press yourself up to a comfortable seat on your mat. Sitting up tall, bring the hands together, lengthen the elbows down toward the mat. So you feel all that space you made in the upper body. Heart stays lifted, bow the head, take a moment to yourself, honor and acknowledge your heart and spirit as well as everyone around you. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thank you. And we had, my cat stayed with us the whole time. Usually she bails at, on flow classes, but she was into it today. Hope you were too. See you next time.